Hey, it's Phil from statisticsmentor.com. In this video, I'm going to run a regression and I'm going to focus on outliers and leverages. The example I'm using is I built a model to predict the volume of a tree from its height and its girth. I use the plot command for the regression and we'll see four plots. Okay. When it does this, it means you have to click on the window to actually bring up one of the graphs. The first one, Res plot of the residuals versus the fitted values. This isn't too great as a residual plot because these residuals are raw residuals, meaning that the measurements are in, are in terms of the uh, same scale as the measurements of the volume, your dv. So these actually volume of what the, the tree, the volume of the tree is measured in. That makes it hard because to know what is a small residual, what is a large residual. On a, this on a scale of something like around minus six to going up towards 10. You know, what is large, what is small. So there are better plots as we'll soon see. QQ, normal QQ plot. So we know that if these residuals, standardized residuals in these case, lie approximately on that line, approximately so, then it's, then it's normal. Uh, we're not interested in that one. Leverage versus residuals versus leverage. Now we've got the standardized residuals. So compared to plot one, look now we're on a scale because this is a well it's t distribution. But you can see now it's on a scale minus two to around two. Okay. And the idea is that approximately you can say there are no outliers. Most of these observations should be between minus 2 to plus 2. So the standardized residual plot, student size residual plot, is a better plot to spot um, outliers. Right, the other thing we can spot see on this uh, graph is uh, Cook's distance, which I'll talk more about later, but this Cook's distance, half. Observation 31 exceeds a Cook's distance of a half. Right, and that's it there. Uh, let's say what more of later of what that means. And there are the four plots. To get those four plots on a same graph, we can use the part MF row command, which you have seen by now, I use it quite a lot. And then run it again. Now you see that's all on one screen. So it's good for um, for uh, when you're doing kind of project work. Okay, so this can be pasted into your word processor. The Cook's distance, which we saw on one of the plots, is a measure of influence. It takes into account of the size of residuals, i.e. considers whether the point could be an outlier, and also whether the point is a leverage point. So we look, and if you remember the rule of thumb is if the Cook's distance for any residual if any point is greater than one, if any observation is greater than one, then that is an influential point and we'll look at that point and determine whether to take it out of the model. Right, Cook's distance, list it, we have 31 observations. Okay, from here it's hard to see whether we've got any which are kind of large. So what we can do is we can plot it on a graph because I want to compare it to the plots we've just had before, I want to keep the existing graphics window, I use the windows command which brings up a new graphics window and now I can when I plot the Cook's distance versus one of the explanatory variables my choice being girth here. All right? If you don't do that it's going to do it against an index it makes more sense to do it against an explanatory variable so that we can compare later Okay, and this is, this is what we get. Girth along here, Cook's distance along here. Recall that earlier in one of the plots, we had seen that the... Um, so in the earlier plot we had this, and now we've got Cook's distance versus girth. You can see one of the observations here is bigger than... is about 0 0.6. And from the earlier plot, residuals versus leverage. Remember, this is the Cook's distance cut off of a half here. There was a point 31, which it noted 
is greater than Cook's distance of a half. So this point then will correspond to, expect it to correspond to observation 31. To confirm that we can use the identify command. Now how this command works is identify followed by the name of the x coordinate on your graph followed by the name of the y coordinate on your graph y axis sorry I've done that and I press enter what happens look, look at the mouse it suddenly goes round round in circles so I go to whichever point and now it turns into cross I go to whichever point I want um, and I click around it okay now if I want and the number will come up to tell you what case it is oh and it case 31 fantastic Right, if I want another case, I would click by it. Notice that when I click, this is not stats now, just showing you how to use it. If I, when I click by it, the number will appear close to where that cross is. So there you are, 18. So if I'm near the corner here, I don't want to be, if I want this one, I don't want to be putting on the left, otherwise, see what will happen. The thing will not appear, or only a bit of it will appear by the screen. Okay, you want to kind of